Welcome to week three. As a reminder, please don't forget that starting this week, all of our lecture materials, assignments, and quizzes will be limited to just three hours. That means you must complete all of your participation assignments and attendance quizzes before the end of our scheduled class hours. So, three hours for our lecture video and all of our work. Are you ready? Let's start. Today we're going to look at Unit 1B, Staying Healthy in a Modern World. This is a continuation of last week's topic, but now we're going to look at some new vocabulary and we'll listen to a different kind of conversation today. First, let's start with a grammar review. Last week we learned about adverbs of frequency. And remember, we use adverbs of frequency to talk about how often we do something. So, as a little review, please take a look at our chart. At the bottom, we will never do something. That means we do it zero times. Then we go up and up and up, and finally, always, something that we do all the time. I'm going to show you three sentences. One of these sentences is a lie. Can you guess which one is not true? Number one, I often cook at home. Number two, I usually go out on the weekend. And number three, I never drink coffee after 11 a.m. There are two truths and one lie. Which one do you think is a lie? The answer is number two. I actually seldom go out on the weekend. I usually have a lot of work to do or I like to relax at home. Now, to practice, I would like you to think about your habits and write some sentences using the adverbs of frequency. Please write one false statement or a lie and a true statement. Well, two true statements. So go ahead, take out your notebook and write two truths and one lie. Okay, did you write your sentences in your notebook? Now let's look at our vocabulary. We have 10 new vocabulary words this week. Please listen and then repeat after me. Enters, enters, responds, responds, sell, sell, defends, defends, occurs, occurs, produces, produces, theory, theory, contains, contains, research, research. In British English, this is pronounced research, 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 research. And finally, common common. Okay, please take a look at your textbook. We have two vocabulary exercises that we'll look at today. First is exercise B on page 14. You will see a short text that uses some of our vocabulary words. Please take a moment to read this article and then move on to the exercise. If you have finished reading, you can fill in the exercise. Those of you who do not have a book can look at the PowerPoint. Please look at all of the words in blue and match them with their definition. All right, let's check your answers. I'm going to show the answers in order. So number one, the smallest part of an animal or plant is called a cell. And if you look at this photo, we can see one, a photo of a cell that was taken through a microscope and to a diagram of a cell. Every living animal or plant is made of cells and the cells are very important to maintaining our health. Next, when we go into a place, we enter. We can enter a room, we can enter a country, or we can enter a certain group. Now look at this factory 
they are making something. This factory produces ice cream or produces popsicles, whatever word you might use. Next, to react by doing something. When we call emergency services, the emergency service responds by sending someone to help. So for example, if you call 911, they will respond by sending an ambulance. Next, to protect someone or something is to defend. Now look at this video. In this video, we introduce liquid mercury to aluminum. When this is done, a chemical reaction happens or occurs. Very interesting. Okay, now we have another short article using the other half of our vocabulary words. Please read these short paragraphs and then complete the exercise. Okay, let's check our answers again. So here we can see a photo of something that has something inside. When you have something inside, you contain something. That's why these are called containers. Next. This is a very usual bird. We can see it very easily and very often. It's a common bird. In case you want to know the English name of this bird, we call this an oriental magpie. It's very common in Korea. Next, they are working hard to learn something. They are studying something. This is research. Next, an idea that's used to explain something. Here we have a diagram of Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity. And that is our vocabulary word, theory. There are many different kinds of theories, scientific theories or personal theories or conspiracy theories. What's important is that they represent a set of ideas, not necessarily proven facts, but ideas that we want to test and research. Okay, now our next vocabulary exercise is a fill in the blank. Please take a look at the word bank and then complete all of the sentences. All right, let's check your answers. Number one, pollen always enters the body through the nose. Number two, the human body is made of millions of tiny cells. Number three, being too clean is just one theory to explain why people suffer from allergies. And you can see in this sentence, theory is an idea, but it's not the only idea. A theory is just one of many different possibilities. Number four, an allergic reaction occurs when the body thinks there is a problem. Number five, Colombia produces delicious coffee. It's true. Number six, milk contains a lot of important vitamins and nutrients. Number seven, the immune system usually defends the body against diseases. Number eight, scientists are now doing research to learn more about allergies. Number nine, a cold is a very common illness. And 10, John usually responds to my phone messages by email. Okay, take a moment to check all of your answers. Great. Now let's talk about allergies. Maybe you have allergies, especially seasonal allergies. Now spring is here and it's time for all of the flowers to bloom and the wind to change and our nose to start running and our eyes to start getting itchy. And if you start sneezing and blowing your nose, especially now, it might make people feel a little nervous to be around you. But it's totally normal to have seasonal allergies. So let's talk about your allergies. I know a friend who has an allergy to peanuts. This is not a seasonal allergy. This is called a food allergy. When she eats peanuts, her lips get very big and red and itchy 
and her throat becomes very uncomfortable. For some people, a peanut allergy could even kill them because they can't breathe anymore. Do you know anyone with a food allergy? Now, there are actually many different kinds of allergies. We can take a look at all of these pictures. We have some foods like peanuts and fish and milk and some plants, right? We have some grass or wheat here. But there are many other allergies as well, like medical allergies. Maybe you have an allergy to certain medications or you have an allergy to certain animals like cats or dogs. So, in your opinion, what is the best allergy to have and what is the worst allergy to have? I want you to take your notebook and write your answers. Okay, hopefully you've decided which allergy you think is the best and which one is the worst. In my opinion, I think the best allergy to have is maybe a mild allergy to something really easy to take care of, like mosquito bites or cats. But the worst allergy, I think, comes from the Lone Star Tick. This is a kind of bug that comes from Texas, and Ticks always climb onto your body when you walk around in a forest or in tall grass because they like to drink your blood. But what happens is, if you are bitten by a Lone Star Tick, it can cause an allergy to meat and you will never be able to eat meat for the rest of your life. And that sounds like the worst allergy in the world, so I never want to get bitten by a Lone Star Tick. All right, let's talk about our listening today. In our listening, we're going to hear a conversation between two people who are discussing different kinds of allergies. So please open your textbook to page 16 and 17. If you don't have your textbook, you can look at the PowerPoint. So we're going to listen for the first time. And the first time, I want you to think about the main ideas of this listening file. So listen to the conversation and tell me, what are the speakers most concerned about? And you have a few options. Number one, air pollution. Number two, asthma. Number three, cats, food allergies. Developing finally, listening skills. Yes. Listening, Which one is an the informal most conversation. Topic of A. This conversation. Listening for Let's main listen. ideas. Page 16. I had no idea that allergies were so serious and so common. Yeah, they are. I'm allergic to strawberries, peanuts, and chocolate. And I love chocolate. Wow. Allergic to chocolate? That must be really hard. It is. Are you allergic to anything? No. At least not that I know of. I don't really know much about allergies, fortunately. Yeah, you're lucky. My allergies are really bad sometimes, especially in spring and early summer. And I also have asthma. Oh, you have asthma too? It can't be easy for you living in the city with all this air pollution then, can it? Well, the air pollution is bad, but I find it much harder to be around smoke. It's really hard for me to breathe. I also can't be around cats for too long. And some kinds of flowers also cause my asthma to act up. Fortunately, my asthma medication works really quickly, and I feel better almost immediately. Well, that's good. What about food allergies? Those can be really bad too, can't they? You bet. Like I said, I'm allergic to chocolate, strawberries, and peanuts. I'd hate to be allergic to chocolate. I can't live without chocolate. Well, believe me, it's not easy. But being allergic to peanuts is actually harder because you don't always know when food contains peanuts or peanut oil. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yesterday in class, Professor Martinez was telling us that there is a no peanuts policy here on campus because allergies can be really dangerous. Yeah, that's right. 
the cafeteria and snack bar stopped serving food that contained peanuts and peanut oil last year after a student had an allergic reaction and was rushed to the hospital. Oh, yes, I remember that. Professor Martinez called food allergies the new allergy problem. Yeah, that's right. And she also said that there were twice as many children with food allergies in 2002 than in 1997. I think it's called the new allergy problem because it's growing very quickly. I read that nowadays about 6% of children have food allergies. 6%? Wow, that's a lot of kids. It sure is. You might have noticed that they talk about all of these topics, but the one that was the most important was a kind of food allergy. But more specifically, they were talking about peanuts. Peanut allergies can be especially dangerous. Now let's listen to the listening file one more time, but this time I want you to listen to some details. In the textbook, we have a few questions that you need to answer. Number one, what is something that causes Elena's asthma to act up? Act up means for it to react or for a reaction to occur. Number two, what percent of children have food allergies nowadays? Number three, what is the new allergy problem? Number four, which food are many people allergic to? And number five, when did developing the listening of skills with food allergies listening grow quickly an informal conversation so please listen a and answer these listening questions. for main ideas page 16 i had no idea that allergies were so serious and so common yeah they are i'm allergic to strawberries peanuts and chocolate and i love chocolate wow allergic to chocolate that must be really hard it is are you allergic to anything? No, at least not that I know of. I don't really know much about allergies, fortunately. Yeah, you're lucky. My allergies are really bad sometimes, especially in spring and early summer. And I also have asthma. Oh, you have asthma too? It can't be easy for you living in the city with all this air pollution then, can it? Well, the air pollution is bad. But I find it much harder to be around smoke. It's really hard for me to breathe. I also can't be around cats for too long. And some kinds of flowers also cause my asthma to act up. Fortunately, my asthma medication works really quickly, and I feel better almost immediately. Well, that's good. What about food allergies? Those can be really bad too, can't they? You bet. Like I said, I'm allergic to chocolate, strawberries, and peanuts. I'd hate to be allergic to chocolate. I can't live without chocolate. Well, believe me, it's not easy. But being allergic to peanuts is actually harder because you don't always know when food contains peanuts or peanut oil. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yesterday in class, Professor Martinez was telling us that there is a no peanuts policy here on campus because allergies can be really dangerous. Yeah, that's right. The cafeteria and snack bar stopped serving food that contained peanuts and peanut oil last year after a student had an allergic reaction and was rushed to the hospital. Oh, yes, I remember that. Professor Martinez called food allergies the new allergy problem. Yeah, that's right. And she also said that there were twice as many children with food allergies in 2002 than in 1997. I think it's called the new allergy problem because it's growing very quickly. I read that nowadays about 6% of children have food allergies. 6%? Wow, that's a lot of kids. It sure is. Let's check your answers. Number one, what is something that causes Elena's asthma to act up? Unfortunately, Elena has way too many allergies. 
Her asthma is triggered by air pollution, smoke, cats, and some kinds of flowers. Number two, what percent of children have food allergies nowadays? The answer is 6%. Number three, what is the new allergy problem? According to Elena, her professor said that food allergies are the new allergy problem. They're becoming more and more common. Number four, which food are many people allergic to? Many people are allergic to peanuts, and that includes peanut oil or peanut butter or anything that even touches a peanut. And number five, when did the number of people with food allergies grow quickly? The number of food allergies increased between 1997 and 2002. Why do you think the number of food allergies increased so much during that time? What changed about the way we eat or the way that we make our food? I want you to take out your notebook and write down your answer. I'd like you to focus your answer on these two questions. Number one, why are food allergies becoming more common? And number two, are food allergies more common in America than in Korea? Why do you think that? So take out your notebook and take some time to reflect on the audio that we just listened to. Let's listen to the audio track one last time. This time, I want you to look at all of these topics and then put them in order that they were mentioned. Snack bar, smoke, flowers, strawberries, city, and medications. You can write this in your notebook. Let's listen. Developing listening skills. Listening. An informal conversation. A. Listening for main ideas. Page 16. I had no idea that allergies were so serious and so common. Yeah, they are. I'm allergic to strawberries, peanuts, and chocolate. And I love chocolate. Wow. Allergic to chocolate? That must be really hard. It is. Are you allergic to anything? No, at least not that I know of. I don't really know much about allergies, fortunately. Yeah, you're lucky. My allergies are really bad sometimes, especially in spring and early summer. And I also have asthma. Oh, you have asthma too? It can't be easy for you living in the city with all this air pollution then, can it? Well, the air pollution is bad, but I find it much harder to be around smoke. It's really hard for me to breathe. I also can't be around cats for too long, and some kinds of flowers also cause my asthma to act up. Fortunately, my asthma medication works really quickly, and I feel better almost immediately. Well, that's good. What about food allergies? Those can be really bad too, can't they? You bet. Like I said, I'm allergic to chocolate, strawberries, and peanuts. I'd hate to be allergic to chocolate. I can't live without chocolate. Well, believe me, it's not easy. But being allergic to peanuts is actually harder because you don't always know when food contains peanuts or peanut oil. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yesterday in class, Professor Martinez was telling us that there is a no peanuts policy here on campus because allergies can be really dangerous. Yeah, that's right. The cafeteria and snack bar stopped serving foods that contain peanuts and peanut oil last year after a student had an allergic reaction and was rushed to the hospital. Oh, yes, I remember that. Professor Martinez called food allergies the new allergy problem. Yeah, that's right. And she also said that there were twice as many children with food allergies in 2002 than in 1997. I think it's called the new allergy problem because it's growing very quickly. I read that nowadays about 6% of children have food allergies. 6%? Wow, that's a lot of kids. It sure is. All right, you must know this listening file really, really well by now. So let's check our answers and see which topics were spoken about in which order. 
The first topic of this audio track is strawberries. Elena mentions having an allergy to strawberries. Number two, city. Number three, smoke. Number four, flowers. Number five, medications. And finally, snack bar. And once they start talking about snack bars, they get into the topic of food allergies, which is the main topic of this conversation. Now let's talk about this week's grammar point, tag questions. What are tag questions? Tag questions are questions that are used at the end of a statement. There are two main uses for tag questions. The first is to confirm whether something is true or not. Here we have two statements. You are a student. She is smart. Now we want to check if this information is true by adding a tag question. You are a student, aren't you? Notice how when we add the tag question, we put a comma in between. You are a student, comma, aren't you? There are also two parts to this sentence. The first is the statement, you are a student. This is an affirmative statement. However, the tag question is now negative, aren't you? Let's look at the next example. She is smart, comma, isn't she? Again, we have an affirmative statement, she is smart, and a negative tag question, isn't she? Our second use is to encourage a reply from the person you are speaking to. Maybe you want them to continue the conversation. It's a kind of way to poke the other person into speaking a little more. Let's look at an example. They live in Seoul. She lives in Seoul. They live in Seoul, don't they? We put a comma in the middle and we have an affirmative statement and a negative tag question. She lives in Seoul, doesn't she? Again, affirmative statement and a negative tag question. Here we can see a Charlie Brown comic that uses a tag question. Lucy comes and kicks his sandcastle. And he looks up at her and he says, you're not happy, are you? How about in casual conversation? Native English speakers use tag questions all the time in conversation. But there's another word that we sometimes use that maybe you've heard more commonly. In casual conversation, we often use the word right instead, especially to confirm information. For example, Miss Hill is your English professor, isn't she? She's your English professor, right? They have the same meaning, but one is a little more casual. Let's look at another example. Oh, he broke his leg. You won't join us for hockey, will you? You won't join us for hockey, right? Now we're trying to confirm the information in a more casual way, but it performs the same function as a tag question. Okay, so now we understand what a tag question is and when we want to use it. Let's learn about how to make a tag question. What is the structure? Tag questions are constructed in two different ways. One, with a positive statement and a negative tag question, or number two, with a negative statement and a positive tag question. Think of a tag question like a battery. When you look at a battery, one side is positive and one side is negative. So let's look at example number one. You like cake, positive statement. Don't you? Negative tag question. Now for the other structure, take your battery and we'll just flip it the other way. We'll start with the negative statement. She hasn't called yet. Has she? Now we have a positive tag question. So think of the battery whenever you're trying to figure out the structure of a tag question. What's important 
is the statement. This is the focus of the information in a sentence with a tag question. You like cake, don't you? You like cake is the information that we want to confirm or that we want to learn more about. The statement is the focus of the tag question. When we use tag questions, the verbs can be a little bit tricky. Let's look at the different types of verbs and the way that we make tag questions for each type. When we have a be verb, was, wasn't, will, won't. It's very simple to create a tag question because we use the same verb again. It was easy, wasn't it? Was, wasn't. It wasn't easy, wasn't, was. Dinner will be, will be, won't. Dinner won't, dinner will. So we use the same verb again. But how about other verbs? They lived, they will meet, lived, meet. Now we're going to use a different auxiliary verb in our tag question. They lived in Seoul, didn't they? She lived in Seoul, didn't she? They will meet tonight, won't they? They won't meet tonight, will they? So it can be a little tricky, so let's look at it in a little more detail. When we're talking about be verbs, think about a mirror. And you can see a mirror here in the bottom corner. Be verbs are mirrors. We use the same verb in both the statement and the tag question. You are a student, positive. We look at our verb, are, and it's the same. Aren't you? Are, aren't. It is crowded. Okay, we have a positive statement which means we need a negative tag question. It is, it isn't. It is crowded, isn't it? Very good. He was relaxed. And we have a be verb in a different tense, but it's still a be verb. He was relaxed. This is a positive sentence. He was, was, wasn't. He was relaxed. Wasn't he? Now let's look at this sentence. You aren't a student. This is a negative sentence. You aren't. Aren't? Are. You aren't a student. Are you? Very good. Let's do another negative statement. It isn't crowded. It isn't crowded. Is it? So be verbs are mirrors. We use the same verb on both sides. Just change the positive and negative or negative and positive. Let's talk auxiliary verbs. There are many auxiliary verbs, but the really common ones are in the yellow box. Will, have, should, could, would, can, must, etc. When we make a tag question, from a statement that contains an auxiliary verb, we must change the auxiliary verb. I will show you two examples, and then I want you to try the other ones on your own. First example, she will arrive on time. She will arrive. This is a positive statement. And we have our auxiliary verb, will arrive. Take your auxiliary verb, will, and now we're going to change that into the negative for a tag question. Will, won't. She will arrive on time, won't she? Example number two. You had finished it. This is a past perfect verb. You had finished. It is a positive statement. Yes, you had finished it. Now let's look at the auxiliary verb. Had finished. Had, make it negative, hadn't. You'd finished it, hadn't you? Very good. Now let's do another one. I'm not going to illustrate it for you. I want you to try to do it by yourself. We should tell him. 
Is this a positive or negative statement? Okay, good. It's a positive statement. Now, where's our auxiliary verb? Very good. We should tell him, shouldn't we? Our auxiliary verb, should, shouldn't. Another one for you to do. She won't arrive on time. Now we have a negative statement. Won't, will. She won't arrive on time, will she? And now we have our positive tag question. You hadn't finished it. Negative statement, hadn't, had. You hadn't finished it, had you? I want you to look here. Our auxiliary verb, although one side is negative and one side is positive, will be in the same tense. You hadn't finished it, had you? Don't put have or will have. It must be the same verb tense. Let's do one more by yourself. We shouldn't tell him. Okay, hopefully you got that answer right. The third type of verb is every other verb. These are just regular common verbs. Dance, speak, eat, go. And we're going to use do or do not when we make tag questions with other verbs. Think about Yoda. Yoda says do or do not. There is no try. So we will do some examples together and I want you to make tag questions using do or do not. You speak French. Is this a positive or negative statement? Good, it's a positive statement. Speak. Do or do not. Let's make it negative. You speak French, don't you? This is our negative tag question. Let's do another one. You studied French. Do or do not? Okay, so we have a positive statement. Let's make a negative tag question. You studied French, didn't you? They went to a movie. Do or do not? Didn't they? Okay, great. Now, why don't, one, <laughs> why don't you do the next ones by yourself? You don't speak French. Do you? You didn't study French. Did you? Notice how the tense is the same. Didn't, did. And finally, they didn't go to a movie. Did they? Okay, very good. So remember our three main types of verbs. Be verbs are mirrors. Auxiliary verbs, focus on the auxiliary verb. And other verbs, think of Yoda, do or do not. Okay, now let's practice using the exercise in our textbook. If you don't have a textbook, you can look at the PowerPoint. On page 18, we have a fill in the blank. Please take a moment to answer these sentences. Now let's check your answers. Please listen to the audio file and check if your tag questions are correct. Lesson B. Exploring Spoken English. Grammar. Tag Questions. A. Page 18. 1. John took the bus, didn't he? 2. They're tired, aren't they? 3. You called her last night, didn't you? 4. Tina likes pizza, doesn't she? 5. That man is your friend, isn't he? 6. He's late again, isn't he? Did you notice something about the way that they pronounce the tag questions? 
The intonation of a tag question is really important to the meaning of your sentence. There are two main types of intonation when you use tag questions. The first is going up. When we ask a tag question with a rising intonation, we usually are asking a question. We are feeling some excitement or we're not sure about some information and we want confirmation. Sometimes we just want someone to agree with what we said because we're really excited. The other kind of intonation is descending intonation. When our tone goes down, it is a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question is a question that we already know the answer to. And sometimes we use a rhetorical question to express some disappointment or anger with the person. I'm going to show you an example of downward intonation being used to create a rhetorical tag question. This is a clip from the TV show called Malcolm in the Middle. This was a really popular comedy from the 90s and early 2000s. In this scene, mom learns that Malcolm helped his brother, Reese, cheat on a test. And you're going to hear mom using a tag question with descending intonation and you will hear her anger and disappointment. So let's take a look at this clip. Okay, here we go. Over expansion of credit and stock market speculation? Yes, that would have been a complete answer. Ha! You didn't read the answer because that's exactly what I wrote. I wrote the royal I. As in Reese, because I think we can all identify with what he's going through. You took that test, didn't you? You cheated. You let him cheat for you. You gave something. He wrote an F. You. <laughs> okay. So, what was the tag question that she used? She said. You wrote that test, didn't you? And she said it with so much anger. Before we move on, there's one little trivia fact about this show. The man who plays the dad is actually the same actor who plays Walter White from Breaking Bad. So if you really liked Breaking Bad, I recommend that you watch Malcolm in the Middle because it's just so funny and he plays a great dad. Okay, so let's move on. We know our intonation going up is a real question. We want to know more information and we're excited. But intonation going down means that we know the answer and maybe we're a little bit disappointed. Now let's go back to this fill in the blank. I want you to listen to the tone and then decide if the tone is going up or going down. Lesson B. Exploring Spoken English. Grammar. Tag Questions. A. Page 18. 1. John took the bus, didn't he? 2. They're tired, aren't they? 3. You called her last night, didn't you? 4. Tina likes pizza, doesn't she? Five, that man is your friend, isn't he? Six, he's late again, isn't he? Now let's check your answers. Hopefully you were able to hear the intonation going up or going down. Number one, John took the bus, didn't he? Number two, they're tired, aren't they? Number three, you called her last night, didn't you? They want to check information that they don't know. Tina likes pizza, doesn't she? This man is your friend, isn't he? He's late again, isn't he? Now we're disappointed in our friend who was always late. When we answer a tag question, we answer in the same way that we would other questions. 
So if you agree, you will say, yes, there is. Yes, I do. Yes, I am. Yes, I did. And if you disagree, you would say, no, there isn't. No, I don't. No, I'm not. Or no, I didn't. Let's take a look at a little sample dialogue that uses answers to tag questions. I'm going to show the dialogue and I want you to read it out loud by yourself. Try using different types of intonation to add a natural feeling to this conversation. Ready? Three, two, one, action. Okay, now that you've practiced saying your lines out loud and maybe adding some facial expressions to really express your emotions, we have a practice activity. If you go to YSEC, you will see this PowerPoint game that I've made for you. This is an optional practice, so please do this after you've finished your participation assignment and attendance quiz. There's no deadline for this game. This is just something fun for you to do to practice making tag questions. Download this PowerPoint and you will see these instructions. To play the game, simply click on the gray buttons to open two cards. You must match the statement and the tag question. If the cards don't match, close them again. Can you remember where the cards are? This is a simple memory match game. So it will look like this. For example, uh, let's open A. You like fish. Um, try again. Now we close the cards. Hmm. Can he? Shouldn't I? Oh, no. So just keep playing over and over again and practice matching your tag questions with the statements. Now let's talk about the participation forum. This week, we have two parts to our participation forum. The first part is the ADOQ forum, and the second part is a tag question interview that you will have with a partner. Let's talk about number one, ADOQ forum. The ADOQ forum is exactly the standard type of forum that I explained in the first week, and you can see the document that explains how to use the forum. So, what will happen is you will go to YSEC and you will see a question. For example, do you think that allergies are becoming more common in your country? The first student will answer the question using ADOQ. Then the next student will respond to the first student's question using ADOQ. And then we make a chain and the next student and the next student and then you will answer each other's questions. Very simple. Part two, tag question interviews. There are three main steps. Number one, download the interview questions. Number two, interview your partner. And number three, write your tag questions and then upload the Word document to the forum so I can see that you completed your work. There are two groups of students, A students and B students. A students have different questions than B students. So you're going to get your questions and then you're going to find your partner. And I named each group like this, pair one, pair two, pair three, etc. Most of the groups have two members, but it's possible that there will be three members. In that case, just talk to everyone in your group and try to answer all of the questions. How can we download our interview questions? Go to YSEC and look at our participation forum, Tag Questions. When you enter the forum, you will see a group, A students and B students. Find your name and then click on your group. 
let's say, for example, you're an A student. You'll find a post with the interview questions there. You can download this Word document and it will look like this. When is your birthday? Where do you want to travel next year? Blah, blah, blah. Take these interview questions and then find your partner. Maybe you are pair one. So go into your pair one forum and ask them the different questions from your handout. Once you learned all the information, you're going to take your answer and change it into a tag question. When is your birthday? My birthday is June 4th. Then write your tag question. Your birthday is June 4th, isn't it? Once you finish writing all of your tag questions, upload the Word document to the participation forum. If your partner is absent or you can't get in touch with them, try to find a partner in this group, students with absent partners. If no one is available, please email me and we'll try to work something out. I know it can be difficult if your partner is absent or not answering to your messages. So I'm always very understanding about this situation. All right, now one final reminder, please complete all of your work within the next three hours, or I guess you have two hours left. So go do all of your participation assignments and your attendance quiz. And when you've finished, then you can enjoy the memory match game. That's it for today's lecture. I hope you really enjoyed it and good luck with your work. Goodbye.